What's up, YouTube? In today's Marketing Monday, I dive into how to properly market to your sphere, as well as how to break that down so you can actually market to your subgroups within your sphere contextually. You don't wanna miss this. As always, hit that subscribe button for us. Leave us a comment. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Acquaintances and friends. For me, these people tend to know you. There's some connection or they wouldn't have connected with you um, on Facebook or, or Instagram, wherever they did. So there's some overlap there. It's gonna vary, but now that you have overlap, now it's about building trust, right? So how do I build trust? Well, this can be done a variety of ways, but the number one thing is go learn something about them. Figure out who these people are, especially those that you wanna engage with, and then I can start to create content for them. Now, one really interesting thing that Facebook has that I think is a very underutilized tool is if you go into your ads manager, so you click your little drop down, go in like you're gonna build an ad, or not gonna build an ad. Instead, when you go into your account, the hamburger menu up here, if you click on that, there's a tool called Audience Insights. If you click on that, for those of you that have a business page, now if I, and I can build different audiences, this tool is very powerful, but for today's purposes, people connected to your page, right? If I come down here and I select my page, this is all specific data to our Century 21 Beggins page their education level, how many, are, how many are men and women, what's their relationship status, more importantly, what types of pages are they liking, what topics are they interested in, right? If I wanna create content that's going to engage my sphere, my page, my followers, my engagement, this is where I figure it out, right? What do they care about? And if I keep scrolling down, what other pages do they like? Right, because now I know that I can go click on any of these blue links and it takes me to that page to see what that page is posting because obviously my audience cares about it, right? Now this is obviously Central to One Beggins page, so we have a lot of, of agents on there which they're gonna care about different things in your group, but leveraging this tool gives me a lot of insight into my audience, right? My sphere and how am I going to engage them? What content do they care about? So this is a really easy tool to use, it's free, and I would highly suggest using it. Um, it'll even show you location. So for those of you that have a, a pretty big sphere, be interested to know where they live, right? Are they in your backyard? Are they in a different state? How are you gaining them? And then their activity, right? What devices are they on? That matters um, to some degree. And then again, how often are they sharing, liking, engaging with your stuff? Okay, that's all really important. So this tool is a free tool. I would think about using it because now, especially when I get to people who don't know me quite as well, I need to be creating content that's gonna build trust with them and that's how I'm gonna do it is understanding what they care about. Your hobbies and interests. For me, this can be done several ways. If you're not utilizing Facebook groups, you should be. Um, so again, if you're interested in something, it could be as something as, just, you know, North Tampa Athletic Association is where my kids play, right? I would leverage this page immensely because there's commonality for me with anyone who likes and follows this page, right? And it could be anything for you guys. It could be cooking. It could be any, it could be the area you live in. It could be a neighborhood group. It could be anything. But those people in that group, they're your sphere. You don't look at them that way because you don't know everyone in there. But the reality is you have a commonality. So for me, any commonality, anyone that I can reach with a push of a button is in my sphere. How are we growing our sphere? This is how. Go leverage the pages, go leverage the groups, right? If I do a search and say, you know what? I really like youth baseball because my kids play. So it'll be easy for me to connect with parents of kids who play youth baseball. If I just do this search and come into groups, these are groups all about youth baseball. I join every single one of these groups 
And then now I have another group of sphere. I could instantly grow my sphere today to another thousand people, right? And now I can start engaging with them in a very organic way because I'm not selling them anything. But what's the key? Get them into my circle, right? Find that engagement point, find that commonality baseball, great. Now they engage with me to some degree. Now I create some content specific for them around youth baseball, right? They engage in that. Guess what happens? I start showing up in their newsfeed. So now when I start giving them real estate advice, they actually see it, right? So again, this is a long tail strategy here, but if you're doing this on a daily basis, this will immensely grow your business and it will, it will help get penetrate a bunch of new people that should be and technically are part of your sphere that you're probably not viewing as part of your sphere right now, okay? So we can use social groups. We can use social search like I just did. Then the key is create content for them, guys. Again, I don't care. We get very, we get very wrapped up in, oh, I've got to post the same type of thing and push the same type of content for in my feed or my page or my, my Instagram profile is going to look all over the place. Who cares? There is no theme, right? This isn't 1999. Not everything has to be the same color and the same music in the back. No, that, that's like not, that is literally 90s branding that they taught in school if you were a marketing student back in the 90s, right? That is literally branding 101 back then. That has changed, right? Go look at any of the largest brands in the world. Go look at Nike, go look at Under Armour, go look at anyone and their profile will not even remotely look the same because they know that they have some kids who wear basketball shoes and they have some kids who wear running shoes and they have some kids who only wear their cleats and they have some kids that play baseball and some kids that play football and they're intermingling that content on a regular basis and you need to do the same. If, she, if Kelly makes a post about taking her Jeep mudding, there's only a small group of first sphere that's gonna care about that, right? The rest of them are gonna keep scrolling. That's okay. She's gonna get the people that care about that to stop. And then if she does one of her posts about, hey, I've got this problem going on in my life, anyone else ever been here, right? Which she's been doing a lot, which I like, that's gonna engage a whole different group. And so that's okay, do it all, right? But understand that if I want, if, if my sphere is a lot of coaches and parents with kids who play youth sports, and I create a funny meme about being a baseball mom, there's a whole section of my sphere that's going to engage with that. There's a whole nother section that isn't, and that is perfectly okay. But now, maybe later in the day, I'm gonna create a post that they care about and that my baseball moms won't care about, and that's okay too. But that reach now is now I'm getting in the feed of multiple groups of people versus one, right? So you never have to be this one type of content all the time. That will not work in today's world because as we said in the beginning, your sphere is made up of a bunch of different people from different places who like different things who are in different age groups. So the only way to build that relationship is to find that commonality and then give them content to get them engaged with it and then they're gonna see all of your content, not just some of it.